North of Luanda, Holden Roberto's FNLA troops were heading for the capital. They wanted to seize it before Angola's Independence Day. They had high hopes of success. We actually had a celebration party uh, in the CIA headquarters in Washington. We expected the news by the end of the day would, that we would have captured Luanda. Led by Cubans, the MPLA troops halted Roberto's advance. In the middle of the valley, about 2,000 122 millimeter rockets began landing. And we had nothing to answer with, and our forces broke and ran. The military force of the FNLA had been blunted. America's ally was in trouble. A bigger challenge now faced the MPLA. In October 1975, South African troops had invaded Angola. From their bases in Namibia, they had joined forces with UNITA. We advanced approximately, I think, on, was something like 80 kilometers a day. By this time, my troops were getting good. Eh? I mean, they were really getting on with it now. They were out of those vehicles and into a, assault formations, which shoot the hell out of these people, you see, and then they would pack up and move because they didn't expect us. The South Africans were helping UNITA and Zaire was supporting the FNLA. So it was only fair that the MPLA asked the Cubans to come and support us in the struggle against the invasions. Just two days before independence, thousands of Cuban combat troops began arriving in Luanda. In Moscow, this was greeted without enthusiasm. It was only when the Cubans had landed that we got involved. Because the Cubans kept asking us for help. They wanted weapons, they wanted food supplies. Once we started sending things to Angola, we were soon in over our heads, even though it wasn't in our plans to go there. Moscow began shipping hundreds of tons of arms, tanks and missiles direct to Luanda. As the MPLA began rehearsals for Independence Day, battles were still raging just miles from the capital. In spite of that, it was important for us to proclaim independence, and we did so. The MPLA celebrated Angola's independence in Luanda. Its enemies had failed to take the capital. It was the November. The 11th of November 1975 was the hardest day in my life. I remembered the 14 years I'd been fighting. I remembered the dead, all those who had made sacrifices. Augustinio Neto greets the Soviet ambassador. The MPLA was recognized as Angola's government by the Soviet Union, Cuba, and most of Africa. Its fight against South African troops gave the MPLA political credibility. South of Luanda, the Cubans prepare to end the South African advance. It was a decisive battle, because if they broke our defense, it would be very difficult then to stop them getting to Luanda. There were roads going to the north, roads going to the center, many roads, which would have made their advance very powerful and fast. The Cubans were ready, waiting. 
Angola would have been lost. Mobutu's troops were close to Luanda. The South Africans had penetrated over a thousand kilometers. They were close to Luanda. The Cuban and MPLA forces outgunned the South Africans. They were shot away badly. And I just saw these lorries with blood dripping out of it. And it, was, it wasn't very nice. To, and then to go and investigate, and for the first time to see they're actually your own troops. Uh, it wasn't very nice at all. They left everything on the field. Men, vehicles, weapons. It was a great victory over the South Africans. South African and American hopes of a quick victory over the MPLA were crushed. Washington was running out of options. Right after Vietnam, the American people in no way, and the Congress and the media, would put up with the U.S. putting its forces in to, to control the outcome of a country that none of us, none of the American people were interested in. The administration fell back on the CIA. It secretly provided money for Roberto and Savimbi to recruit mercenaries from Africa, America and Europe. did kill when we had no particular reason to. Um, we tortured to achieve information that they probably didn't have, and this was not captured enemy soldiers. These were probably just local civilians. And that atmosphere permeated its way through the whole unit. We were just a loose band of bandits with a very dangerous leader and a few associates. Among the mercenaries, there were some very fine soldiers. Callan, for instance. I've seldom seen such a good soldier. He had phenomenal courage. He was a psychopath a raving psychopath, and a couple of men right near him were psychopaths. Thirteen mercenaries were captured by the MPLA and put on trial. Callan and three others were executed. The CIA was still active. The Congress would, would have stopped us up front if we had not successfully lied to them, putting in, putting in arms, putting in advisors, bringing in South Africa, we kept it propped up for a while, but opposition was mounting. Still shocked by events in Vietnam, the Congress cut off additional CIA funds for Angola. This abdication of responsibility by a majority of the Senate will have the gravest consequences for the long-term position of the United States and for international order in general. A great nation cannot escape its responsibilities. 